Hi, welcome back. I'm scientist Kate. This is grade three, weather and climate, chapter one, lesson five, writing island arguments. In this lesson, we're gonna be using evidence to write arguments, but you don't need any pencil or paper. We're gonna be doing a shared writing to figure out how to write this argument together. All you're gonna need is your best thinking brain and a great curious attitude. Are you ready? Awesome, let's go. Okay, so by now you definitely know that we're working as meteorologists for the Wildlife Protection Organization, trying to compare and evaluate evidence about Arc Island, Blue Island, and Creek Island to decide which island would make the best reserve for orangutans. Last time we used evidence cards and we decided which pieces of evidence were strong evidence and which pieces of evidence were weak. Then we took all of the strong evidence and we sorted them into this table by precipitation and temperature so that we could compare and evaluate which island is the best. And I think we decided on Blue Island. So the Wildlife Protection Organization has sent us these three claims and they want us to argue which claim is the best. Here they are. Let's read them together. Claim A, the weather on Ark Island is most like the weather where orangutans live. Claim B, the weather on Blue Island is most like the weather where orangutans live. And claim C, the weather on Creek Island is most like weather where orangutans live. Let's add the word claim to our vocabulary. A claim is a proposed answer to a question. So we have three claims here and we need to decide which one we're gonna to recommend to the Wildlife Protection Organization. Now, when we make um, our recommendation to the Wildlife Protection Organization, we need to make sure that our argument is supported by evidence not by opinions. So let's take a look back to our data chart. Let's look at Ark Island, the first island across the top. We had evidence showing that Ark Island has a very hot temperature of 96 degrees Fahrenheit. If you think back to the temperature benchmarks, remember that chocolate melts at 93 degrees Fahrenheit. That means chocolate would definitely melt on Ark Island. So we know it's a really hot place. But remember that we didn't have any precipitation evidence for Ark Island, and that made it really difficult to compare Ark Island to the other two islands. So when we're looking at claim A, claim B, and claim C, when we start with claim A, the weather on Ark Island is most like the weather where orangutans live, do we have enough evidence to support that claim as our recommendation? Tell me. No, we don't. We have temperature data, but we don't have any precipitation data, so we can't possibly support claim A. All right, let's look back at our data table. We can compare Blue Island and Creek Island, and when we did compare their temperatures, we found that Blue Island had a really hot temperature of 95 degrees compared to Creek Island's temperature of 86 degrees. So we know Blue Island was the hottest of those two islands. Looking at precipitation, Blue Island had 38 millimeters of rainfall, and Creek Island only had 20 millimeters of rainfall. So when we compare those two, we see that Blue Island was the hottest and the rainiest of the islands that we had data for. So going back to our claims, we already know it can't be A. So let's look at claim B and claim C. Claim B says the weather on Blue Island is most like the weather where orangutans live. Do you think that sounds right? Yeah, me too. We have data and evidence to show that claim B is the one we should support. What about claim C? The weather on Creek Island is most like the weather where orangutans live. No, we know that Creek Island isn't as hot or as rainy as Blue Island. Okay, so now we're gonna work together to write our first scientific argument. Well, wait a minute. What is a scientific argument anyway? What do you think of when you hear the word argument? Hmm. When I visualize the word argument, I think of two people like yelling at each other and being really mad. Do you think that's what a scientific argument is? Do you think it's like two scientists screaming at each other about who's right and who's wrong? No, that's not what a scientific argument is. Scientists don't get angry and shout at each other about who's right and who's wrong. Instead, a scientific argument is something that does two things. Number one, it answers a question with a claim about the natural world. And number two, 
it includes evidence to support the claim. Now we selected a claim. We claim that Blue Island is the best island for the orangutan reserve. And guess what? We have evidence to support that claim. So we're ready to make our scientific argument. We're gonna write it together using all the evidence that we've collected, compared, evaluated, sorted. We've done a lot with this evidence and now we're ready to make a recommendation to the Wildlife Protection Organization. So here we go. Whenever you start a scientific argument, you always wanna start out with your claim first. Just let's not have any secrets or any mysteries. Let's just tell them what we think. So here it is. The weather on Blue Island is most like the weather where orangutans live. There you go. We've shared our claim. Remember that it's claim B from that list. Now, if somebody was reading our argument, they may not know what the weather is like where orangutans live. So we should probably give them a little more information. Do you remember what the weather's like where orangutans live? I bet you do. What two things are we looking for in the weather for the reserve? Yeah, we're looking for hot weather and we're looking for rainy weather. So let's add that to our argument. You can see I've written it all, um, I've written it in orange. So orangutans live on islands that have hot, rainy weather. Great. Now we can be sure that our audience knows what the weather is that we're looking for. All right, so let's go back to our evidence because it's time to start drawing on this evidence from the evidence table and putting that into our argument. So that's going to really support our claim. So remember that we don't have enough evidence for Arc Island, so we want to just jump into our evidence for Blue Island. So we're going to pull that piece of temperature evidence, 95 degrees. And we're going to pull that piece of precipitation evidence, 38 millimeters, and let's put them into our argument. Ready? The evidence shows that Blue Island's temperature was 95 degrees and Creek Island's temperature was only 86 degrees. Blue Island is the hotter island. Great, that's a really solid, convincing piece of evidence. It's two um, measurements that were taken the same way. That's really strong. Okay, let's go back and grab our precipitation um, evidence. Okay, so 38 millimeters for Blue Island and 20 millimeters for Creek Island. So we need to make sure that we show Blue Island was rainier. Okay, here's what I added. I hope you're okay with it. The evidence also shows that Blue Island had 38 millimeters of rainfall in one day and Creek Island only had 20 millimeters of rainfall. That means Blue Island is rainier. Cool, so we've used evidence to show that Blue Island is hotter and that it's rainier. All right, so what we also need to do is we need to prove to the Wildlife Protection Organization that we reviewed all three of the islands and we did our best to compare. So we need an explanation for why we didn't select Ark Island. Do you remember why we didn't select Ark Island? Yeah, we didn't have enough evidence because we didn't have a precipitation um, reading for how much rainfall fell in one day. So we need to add that to our argument to show that we've been thorough. So we can't recommend Ark Island because we don't know how much rainfall that island had in one day. So we couldn't compare it to the other islands. In conclusion, we recommend Blue Island because our evidence shows it has the best weather for a reserve. So not only did I answer uh, the Ark Island piece, but I also added a conclusion just to kind of wrap it up because we know when we write, we always want to add a nice conclusion that restates our claim. So we've just written our first argument together. Are you ready to hear it all together? Let's see if it sounds convincing. Let me know if I've forgotten anything. From the top. <laughs> me, 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 me. Okay. The weather on Blue Island is most like the weather where orangutans live. Orangutans live on islands that have hot, rainy weather. The evidence shows that Blue Island's temperature was 95 degrees Fahrenheit and Creek Island's temperature was only 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Blue Island is the hotter island. The evidence also shows that Blue Island had 38 millimeters of rainfall in one day and Creek Island only had 20 millimeters of rainfall. That means Blue Island is rainier. We can't recommend Ark Island because we don't know how much rainfall that island had in one day, so we couldn't compare it to the other islands. In conclusion, we recommend Blue Island because our evidence shows it has the best weather for a reserve. Wow. Yeah, knocked it out of the park, took our evidence, organized it into a really strong argument. 
which reminds me, I wanna add the word argument to our vocabulary. An argument is the use of evidence to say why one idea is the best. Did we just do that? Oh, we did. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. All right, great argument writing. Now, so far, the evidence we've gathered points to Blue Island as being the best island. I'll send our argument to the Wildlife Protection Organization and see what they say. What questions do you still have about the orangutan reserve and where the best place for it might be? You can tell me. I still have a question. I'm dying to know where that missing piece of information about Ark Island is because I wonder what it would tell us and if our claim would change if we had that piece of information. Hmm. Maybe we'll find out, maybe we won't. Now, before we wrap up for today, I want to remind you to keep collecting your local weather data. Local weather data is the weather data from right around wherever you live. So I live in Seattle, Washington, and I've been collecting my own weather data. Remember that last time I read you the first line of what I collected, and here's what I collected today. For the date, I put April 2nd. For the time, I put 5.30 p.m., because that's what time it is. And for the temperature, I checked my thermometer, and I saw that it was 42 degrees Fahrenheit. For precipitation, I could just put zero because it didn't rain a single drop here today. And for cloud cover, I went outside and y'all, it was sunny and clear. Ooh, it was beautiful outside. Spent some time sitting out on my back deck, watered all my plants. Oh my goodness, it was beautiful today. All right, so I hope that you are still collecting your local weather data too, because we're gonna need it later on in the unit. Well, that's it. That's the end of chapter one. I'll be back for chapter three. But in the meantime, for chapter two, you're gonna have a new scientist helping you through the program. Her name is Scientist Cynthia, and I think you'll really like her. A cool fact about Scientist Cynthia is that she doesn't live in Seattle, Washington. She lives in a different US city. I'm gonna give you a hint about what city she lives in to see if you can guess it. The hint is this city's nickname is the Mile High City because it's located in the Rocky Mountains in the United States. Can you guess? If you don't know, that's okay. You're in third grade, you probably don't know every single major US city yet. So you could figure it out three different ways. One way is you could ask the other adults who live in your house if they know the answer. You could look it up online. The internet is a wealth of information. Or you could just wait until chapter two, lesson one, when scientist Cynthia introduces herself and tells you what city she's in. So I'll see you again for chapter three. In the meantime, stay curious. Bye.